Hey guys, so some people have commented that they love to knit and love to crochet but they can't afford custom gourmet yarns and this is really where I started out. I learned how to knit as a child but then when I was in my early 20s I wanted to knit something really beautiful. I didn't want to use acrylic anymore and for a very short time I was buying um, wool yarn from a knitting and crocheting specialty yarn store and I was spending the cheapest yarn that I could find was I think eight dollars for a small skein and the nicer ones were 15 to 30 and I loved the items I was able to make from there I loved making my socks and my hats and my gloves and my scarves and everything from those yarns but I couldn't afford to make anything else anything bigger and I could barely afford to do it for the hats and stuff so, I mean, you know, most hats, I could make a, a hat from a skein of yarn. So it would cost me, if I got the medium priced one, it would be $15 to make a hat. And it would be beautiful and I would cherish it and I wouldn't have multiple hats. I just have the one hat that I really loved. Um, but then I got married. And um, prices, those kind of prices, I just couldn't handle them anymore. So that was when I got into using a drop spindle again. I used one as a, as a child. And long story short, some of you have expressed you have the same problem. You don't have the money to spend on that kind of thing. So, this, you'll like this. These were some of my first drop spindles. I got one of these at a fiber fair. It is two, it is two CDs or DVDs with a grommet and a dowel. And um, this works perfectly fine. This is what I've already spun on it this morning. And the, the benefit of, of this is that I can ship it not in a box because if I tried to ship this in a, an, an envelope, uh, it could get completely smashed and destroyed in the post. But if I send it like this in a, in a big padded envelope, I can probably send it for $4 in an envelope. Um, for those of you who really don't have pennies, this is a particular grommet. You have to have the particular grommet. And I have not been able to find them in any of my own hardware stores. It's taken me um, almost two years to find the right size grommet. I've made multiple orders, gone into multiple stores, and the, the grommet usually is too big. Hole in, the, the hole in the center is too big and the lip on the outside is too small. The, the, the reason why this is special is that there's no glue required. The grommet holds on very tightly to the dowel. And when you have that centrifuge from spinning, it doesn't allow the grommet to move up and down on the dowel. And so that's why this is so nice for a beginning spinner. You can actually move the dowel so that it is either a, a top whirl or a bottom whirl. It's adjustable according to what you want to do with it. Um, and so these were the things I wanted to send as part of the kit. A dog brush, because if you are buying carding paddles, they do not clean the fiber well. You're wasting your money if you're going from raw fleece, unless it is 100% clean. If there's no vegetable matter in it at all, or you're going to be carding roving that has already been cleaned, you're wasting your time with the paddles. Um, if you're going from raw fleece and you want to have a really nice finished product, you need to use the carding combs that are like the hackles, the, the wolverine claw ones. Those are the ones that will clean it. However, for a beginner, you can use just a dog brush. And I'll see if I can pan down to my lap and show you how this works. Tell me when you can see my lap. Okay. So this is some of my Romney and you hold the tip like this and then you want to have jeans or something on and this is how you open those fibers up. And the reason why it's nice to start out this way is that it allows you to look at the fiber and tell, you know, all those words that they tell you when you're learning how to spin about crimp and softness and coarseness and vegetable matter 
and drafting, all of that becomes very clear when you have to individually hand card each one of your locks. Now, see how clean that is? This, this method will remove all of your slubs, it will remove all of your vegetable matter, and you can spin from this. You draft it out. This fiber has a little bit of lanolin in it, so it's kind of resisting my draft a little bit. You can draft it out and then spin directly from the lock. So, we'll see if I can pan back up right into my red face. Okay, so that's, that's kind of what I'm planning on doing is you can have these, uh, this fleece show up in your P.O. box or your street address or whatever. And what would be included would be a dog brush, the drop spindle, and the raw fleece. And then um, if, you, if you want to go out and do your own kit, the outside diameter of the grommet needs to be 7 eighths inch. And the height of the lip needs to be 3 sixteenths inch. Dad needs your help. We can't lift the trailer. Sorry about that. Okay, so if you want to go buy these items yourself, um, 7 eighths on the outside, 3 eighths is the inside hole, and then the inside rim on the outside that holds the um, CDs in needs to be, um, I believe it was 5 eighths. 5 eighths is that inside rim, which is 3 sixteenths inch deep. And, um, and then you can just go to the dollar store and get dog, um, dog brushes. And you can get um, raw wool, raw fleece on Etsy or you can get roving at Paradise Fibers. I mean, it's all over the place. But I will have some of these pre-made in my Etsy um, shop now for those of you who are interested in that. You're welcome, welcome to contact me with any questions and I will probably be doing up some videos on how to use the spindle. And um, if you get a fleece that's really dirty, like this little piece right here, it can make spinning just not very much fun. So if you order it from somebody and it has a lot of that in it, um, you know, don't don't beat yourself up trying to use every single little last piece. You can see that over on this side, it's much cleaner. So I'm just going to take this part that's really filthy and, and just throw it away. So there you go. Go check out our Etsy store and we'll talk to you later. I'm hoping you guys can see this. I It drops a little far, so the easiest way to start out is with the park and draft method, which is that you park it between your knees, have your roving here, wrap it around your arm so that it's not getting caught up in your, in what you're trying to spin, park it, and then draft with both hands. If your knot is too far down, it will make your spindle warble. You can also put a little hook in the top. Um, that makes it a little bit less time consuming. But a lot of times when you're first starting out, you end up needing to park to draft. So you'll park, draft, pinch at the top pinch at the top so that your um, your twist is not getting up there into your new fiber. And then spin it a few times to let that twist set. See? If it was a perfect spinning wheel, it would not warble at all, but the first couple years that I used a drop spindle, it had a warble. Um, and um, 
you can get drop spindles out there that don't warble, but a lot of times um, for a really nice one, you're going to be $40 or $50 just for the drop spindle. Am I ready to go? Yeah. I'm not going. Oh. Well, I'm going to stay here and make lunch. Oh. Well, if we're having lunch there. And I don't think we are. Well, Dad's ready to go. Is he? So, he once really you get care better... If, he doesn't really care if you come. Okay, so you can just go with him. Okay. I'll be here making lunch. And then you can draft all the way down to the floor. And then put it on. Guys, so I'm doing my own wool thing so that I can also stuff my own animals that die in like my bird chair because I'll just stuff the skin so that I it can make it easily. So this is what I do. You have to, if you want it to be purple stuffing, you can just get that purple Mom, can you also get me that the purple? I might be able to match it on too. So here's Paige You want some dark again. purple? Yeah, dark dark. But what's in there? Here's the Paige box? as yeah, well. Yeah, I don't. Oh. I don't like using what's in the trash. It, it's going to be a little. Here, let me get you some that's going to be easier. Paige. Uh, So what you do Can you see them? is you keep on brushing. Thanks. But remember how if you load it up too high. I know, I know. The teeth won't be able to do their job. Yeah, but I'm only doing one brush. Oh, okay. But carefully. <laughs> Did you want to try the new spindle I made? Yeah, sure. Thanks. Put your, um, here. Do you want to take, do you want to use my roving or yours? Yours. Okay. Go ahead and put your comb over there. For a second. No. Let go. Okay. Now what you need to get, you need to get all of those covers in perfectly. So you wrap them on that and really bang in and you tension. And then you start to brush. Okay, you gotta look. Which way was I spinning it? I was spinning it this way. So you have to spin in the same direction or else you're going to untwist everything I've done. Then you're going to be really mad. No, but your yarn will fall. See how tight it all has to be? 